Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church again. It's good to be with you. Here we are, the last day of the first week of February. I hope you've had a good week. And I hope you're going to have a good weekend. I hope you've seen God at work in your life. And you'll continue to see that. It's a real blessing to know that God of the universe walks beside us each and every day. So I want to continue our talks in Proverbs. Today I'm sharing in Proverbs 21 and verse 3, and, and here's what it says. The Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifices. Now, in order to understand this proverb, we have to understand the process of sacrifices in the life of the Jew. In the Old Testament, the temple was up and running, as they say, and every Jew, every male, was required to make a sacrifice in the temple. And the sacrifice, which animal was selected, depended on the wealth of the individual. And there are all kinds of rules in Leviticus about this. Some people had to bring a bull, some just brought a dove. But it was set up so that everybody had access to offering a sacrifice in the temple. And the reason everybody had to have an opportunity is because that's how you got your sins forgiven. Once a year, you made a sacrifice for your previous year's sin. And then the next year, you'd come back and you'd do it again. In fact, Jewish law required all Jewish males to come to Jerusalem for seven different festivals and feasts. Now, they were able to do them in just three trips, but you had to come. It wasn't an option. It wasn't something extra you could do. You had to show up if you were a male. And, and so the part of doing sacrifices that this talks about here talks about the rules and the rituals and the regulations of life as a Jewish person. And those things were essential to being a person of God. Now, the proverb here is saying something about those regulations and rituals and whatnot. It's saying that these are really important. It's not saying they didn't count or they didn't matter, because they did. But it's saying there's something that pleases God even more than that. And what is that something? Well, I'll read it, the first part again. The Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just. Now, that part of the verse applies to us today. The, the, the sacrifices, too, if, if we look at that in terms of rituals, Springs Mennonite Church is not a liturgical church. We don't have a lot of rituals. Some churches do. And it's a style of worship. It's a choice that you choose. I, I don't think it has anything to do with spirituality or non-spirituality. You can come to a free church, kind of like we are, and pretend to be a Christian. And you can go to a ritualistic church, like the Episcopal Church, and pretend to be a Christian. That part doesn't matter. And a lot of people figure if they show up at least Christmas and Easter, throw a little bit in the pot, they're pretty much okay. At least I did my duty. I showed up on Easter and Christmas. Well, there's more to being a Christian and walking with God than that sort of thing. And what the more is, it says here, is doing what is right and what is just. Now let's look at those two for a minute. Doing what is right. The right thing is almost never the selfish thing. I know in our culture, we hear a lot of, got to do this for me. It's my time. I want to do this. I go to church for this. I heard one parishioner tell me who was 
rather upset and said, well, I only come to church to listen to Jan lead the worship music. And I thought, wow, that's not very good. A lot of our lives are selfish. Our culture encourages us to be selfish. Look at the ads. Look at the advertisements. Indulge yourself self in this or that. <laughs> and you know, those ads are really deceptive and they're really good. Last weekend, Faith and I were watching the television and it must have been pizza day because every time we turned around, there was a new ad for pizza. And by the end of the late afternoon, early evening, Faith said, you know, I kind of wish we could get a pizza. But we don't live where you can have one delivered and the snow was too deep to go get one and we didn't have any made in the freezer. So we just decided, well, we'll wait on it and see. But <laughs> they convinced us we really needed a pizza. And, and, and the world around us convinces us to do what is right for us. And that's the exact opposite of what God says. Do what is right. And Jesus says, it's better to love your neighbor than yourself. It's better to care about someone else than yourself. Now, it doesn't mean you don't care for yourself. It doesn't mean that you don't love yourself. It's just trying to get us to do what's right. And what's right is what is compassionate and what is loving. And then it says, and do what is just. Justice is a hard word to think about. It's almost always predicated on what I think has to be done in defense of me. My sense of justice may be the exact opposite of yours. And lots of times when when something happens that's bad, a crime or something of that, well, I want them to get justice. They deserve this punishment for what they've done. Well, that's probably true. I'm not going to argue against that. But what I am going to argue is if that's your if that's your criteria, then what about yourself? Do you want God to judge you on the basis of justice? What you deserve? You see, this passage here is saying, God is more pleased when we do what is right and just. Just means what really is the best thing for the participants in this or that? And the best thing is what will bring them to a place where they can live the life that God wants them to live. Our penal system doesn't think of that. It doesn't care about that. It just cares about getting even. And that's not, that is not what God is about in his mind. So you think about these things. Do what is right. Do what is just. And in doing so, Proverbs here says, God will be pleased. And that really, really should count for everything. Well, thanks for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. If you have a need, prayer concern, let us know. We'll do whatever we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. God bless you. I'll talk to you again.